kind of experience that story I'm going to go on. So, so we were talking about the grandfather's paradox and I stated the first solution. Moving on to the second solution. This one's pretty interesting. There is a movie called The Time Machine and it pretty much explains this solution. In the movie, there's a scientist. His lover dies in an accident. So this scientist invents a time machine. He goes back in time and saves his lover from dying. Uh, that girl gets hit by a car and she dies. So he goes and saves her from being hit by the car. They keep on walking and something happens that the girl dies again by falling down on the road or, like, or tripping aside and getting stabbed by someone else. So what I am trying to explain over here is history cannot be changed. That's what the second solution states. No matter what you try to do, you cannot change your history. So in the case of Jack, if he goes back to try and tries to kill his grandfather, he would not succeed. No matter what he does, his grandfather would still go on to live. So many people would have stated before that, if time machines come into action, they could probably use it and go back and stop Hitler from causing that mass genocide and all. But no, that won't be possible. Because no matter how much you try to stop a person from doing certain things that have his, that, that are the reason for the history, it cannot be stopped. So this is the second solution to the grandfather's paradox. And moving on, we've got Jayati Ma'am doing her ACS5, the abstract, abstract concept. And before I call her on stage, I would like to request an evaluator moment, sir, to read out the positive papers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jenny is doing her uh, project file abstract concept from advanced communications manual, speaking to inform. The objectives of research and analyze an abstract concept, theory, historical force, or social or political issue. Present the ideas in a clear, interesting manner. Timer, the time is six to eight minutes. All the best. Thank you, sir. No, 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 no. I think it was in 2014, my husband Sundar, in the same platform, did his DTM speech on the same topic, abstract concept. And uh, the title was Placebo. What do we mean by abstract concept? The concept could be any philosophical idea, or it could be some engineering principles, or it could be some economic theory which we cannot demonstrate on stage but some way or the other it affects our lives in our daily lives those are abstract concepts he took something called placebo and he's my husband right <laughs> so women always or the wives always do the opposite if he says yes it's no if it's no it's <laughs> yes so i want to research on the same abstract concept uh, of placebo and I found that the opposite of placebo is nocebo. To understand both the concepts, uh, you need to first understand what placebo is. Only then you will understand what nocebo is all about. Placebo, to understand this, I want to take you all time travel into this World War II. That time what happened? Dr. Henry Butcher was treating all his wounded soldiers. Everybody were pouring in. Suddenly what happened, the marfil, the painkiller, got exhausted. He did not know what to do. You know, it was a pathetic sight that the uh, soldiers were suffering because of the pain. Not able to see this, the nurse, what she did, she did something very unique and different. She took the syringe, injected saline water into it, and told all the soldiers that this is a stronger painkiller and it's going to cure you and she injected or administered the entire injection to all the wounded soldiers. Believe me, just half an hour, the soldiers were feeling much rejuvenated and much better. Seeing this Dr. Henry was taken aback. How can this happen? I did not inject Martin or other thing. So he started doing a research. Can this happen? Then he found that, yes, there's something called placebo effect, which says, I shall please. That is the exact Latin meaning. It's a Latin word, placebo. The etymology, if you go back, and it's come into English. So many Latin words have come into English. Like that's this placebo, which is the placebo effect means 
I shall please. You say something positive and do it, it will definitely happen. So the exact opposite, when you research, you'll find that it's no zebo. That is, I shall hum. If you're taking a medicine prescribed by a doctor, and if some other doctor says that this medicine, it has got 20 side effects, that's all. This medicine will not work for you at all. Definitely. 100%. This is the fact. This is true. In fact, to elaborate the scope of this nocebo effect, again I need to travel down my lane when I was a kid. My grandma always used to tell the story of a Meenakshi party. What happened to this Meenakshi party was, she was just cooking in her kitchen and suddenly she felt that a bug entered into her ear. And she started crying in pain, saying that my ear is paining, something has gone inside. So immediately, uh, uh, Setu Raman, I mean Ashi Pati's husband, took her to an ENT specialist. And the doctor examined completely and said that nothing is there inside your ear. It's all psychological. Nothing has gone inside. Maybe a wax or something which gives you that pain. I'll give you all these medicines, everything. And she went back. She was not convinced. She was telling, you did not take me to the right doctor. There is a bug still poking into my ears and it's paining heavily. After a few days, he did not know what to do. So again, Sita Raman, he took uh, Minakshi party into another doctor. This doctor knows about psychology of human beings. So the entire story, how he, uh, she, he met another doctor was explained by Sita Raman. So he heard all these and said that, let me examine it properly. Before that, I need to buy a very strong liquid to inject in your ear. Let me ask my assistant to go and buy. He stepped outside, said something to his uh, assistant and came back. After some time, the assistant got some strong medicine. And with the bowel, he injected. You know what happened? You must have guessed it, right? He said, Minakshi, but he looked there, there's a dead bug outside here in the bowel. So you know what assistant got for this doctor? Yes. So she was so happy to see this dead bug. She believed that this doctor was great. And believe me, this pain vanished. This is a true story. And this story was repeatedly told by my granny to me. I used to always laugh when I hear this story. She Because she doesn't like this Meenakshi party. And she loves to criticize this Meenakshi party again and again to me. When I grew up, this thought was always lingering. There was no bug in her ear. But how did the pain go away seeing a dead bug in the bowl? There should be something, isn't it? So I want some authentic information about that. I started doing research. Before that, I went to my senior doctor, my uncle. I said, Mama, is this true? Can this happen? Or it's all like psychology where we play around the mind or something like that. He said, no, Jayanti. Even in MBBS, we study what is called placebo and nocebo. That's why doctors are very careful in speaking to you, <coughs> not telling you the actual truth. And even in BBC, in one of its news channels, it said that this nocebo, if you are under this nocebo effect, it can even kill you. And there was an entire feature on this. Though it might look very abstract, this is a concept. I can quote another story, what exactly happened in Toastmaster. I don't want to quote anybody's name here. Let's assume for story's sake, it's Ramya or somebody. She came and gave her CC1. The evaluator, not looking into the objective of the CC1, came back and said that, Ramya, you gave a very good speech. Though you stammered in between, you did not lose your body language. You did not have any eye contact. The stage usage was very bad. And of course, with Sandra said, they said, okay, still you did a very good job. That's fine. Believe me, Ramya did not turn up to Toastmasters meeting after that. That was the first and the last meeting of Ramya. So as an evaluator, we must only stick on to the objective of the project. Not going beyond that and create some nocebo effect and push away that person out of this Toastmaster around any of her life journey. Even the other day, I went to my mom's place and my mom was telling, Jayanta, you look so dull. You mean, you say, yes, ma, I'm very dull. You know, in the morning I had so much of work. My boss was, um, I mean, like uh, putting me into the tower left and right and I had a, a great bad day today. 
When my mom is, went inside, my husband was telling, "What, Jendi? From morning you've been dancing, and after that you went for a badminton match, and now when your mom is asking just to escape dinner, you're telling that you're very tired." That was the absolute truth. Your mind plays a hawk. When you want to do it, you will do it, irrespective of your body condition. If you are having this nocebo effort through yourself or through somebody. Be very cognizant. Always see if the person is giving the right thing, whether it's placebo to you or nocebo to you, and always say no, no to nocebo. Over to you. This is method called using references. Okay, so this week's agenda. I'm not sure if many of you would have noticed it, but there was a reference to the theme. Thank you. <laughs> He, he called it reference. Okay. There was only one person who pointed it out. And sir, don't be. You are the person. Mohan sir. Mohan sir pointed out that the date was mentioned wrongly. Or it was a reference to time travel. It was supposed to be 14th April, but it was mentioned as 11th April. And the person responsible for that is going to complete the TV session. You guys might think that we wrongly put it in the agenda and we somehow managed that to give a present to one, but it's not. We did it intentionally. And thank you, thank you Dr. Master Joes. And uh, after seeing this uh, time travel, so I also have some experience with this uh, time travel thing. I started reading a lot of books. And um, I, I, I thought that he would bring up this one. This is a famous quote from Einstein, right? So he explained everything about relativity and all the guys are like confused. And he said, okay, let me explain. To your level, see, uh, like uh, let us take someone from the uh, time, time age. Right, so uh, just imagine this guy. For one hour is different for him in different times. So when he is with a beautiful girl, so the one hour goes like a one minute. And when he is in a Toastmaster meeting, <laughs> one hour goes like, come on. <laughs> okay, so one hour, two hour. So this is. And by this example, he explained, okay, this is how relativity works. I'm not going to uh, explain a lot. Uh, about this TV session, it's going to be an impromptu session for the guest's sake. Uh, we will call the person here and we will give them a, a topic and they have to speak for two minutes. Minimum one minute and maximum two minutes. Okay? I'll, I'll call the person randomly. At first, I would call uh, Toastmaster Ram Prasad. Thank you. Thank you. The trouble is, you think you have time. The trouble is, you think you have time. Good afternoon, those monsters. Good afternoon. So this happens for most of... It, it is very out uh, thing for me. I am I have done... I am with those monsters for almost a year. I have just given my CC2. Most of the time I used to think, still I have some time to prepare for my CC3. And whenever <laughs> our... Uh, VP Santos asked me whether, whether you have prepared for your CC3. I, I, has it been given to your mentor Arvin? Was still a, I, I thought I have still little more time to prepare, but I didn't. I couldn't do that. So the trouble is, I I am thinking I have more time. I am procrastinating the things to the to the other day. So still I think I have one more week of time or two more, two more week of time to prepare for my speech and at the last minute when someone asked me, that was the last moment. So. Uh, please do come out, don't take this as a confession. You can drive your own time, you can prepare a lot. And uh, next, uh, next person like the Toastmaster Channel.
as Toastmaster Chokalingam rightly pointed out, if a person is with someone that he's like spending time with, it it might be one hour to you on a watch, but then when you check the watch two minutes later, you might realize that it went by so quickly that uh, you, you think it just would be like two minutes. Or like he said, if you're in a Toastmaster meeting, the, the time might actually go by in one minute only. Don't make it wrong. Way Toastmaster meetings are really fun. So. People have spent their entire lives weaving theories around time travel, right? Our own Toastmaster, the day Joe's built an entire meeting around it. But what if we look into the concept as nothing more than just imagination of people? Then Joe's would have nothing to talk about. And I would really like to see that situation. So let's talk about this game some more. Why the, there were no clocks invented in the earlier days? So how did people even come up with the concept of time? They installed sundials in their gardens, or they looked at shadow positions and figured this is day and this is night. When it goes dark, it's night, and when it, the sun rises, it's day. And the time in between is just some vague thing we will not define at all. So that's how the earliest concept of time came about. Then some smart people decided to think: let's measure specific parts of the day. And who decided who those parts of the day was? Nobody. They just installed a sundial in the garden when the positions changed. They said, this is the earlier part of the day, we'll call it afternoon, uh, uh, forenoon. This is the later part of the noon, we'll call it afternoon. And then that's how that came about. And then some other person invented the clock and said, let me put two hands on a flat surface, put one steel cage around it and market it to the entire world as a miraculous device. That's how the clocks got invented. But who decided how the minute hand and the uh, hour hand were going to be placed? Because I swear, my mom has told me the hour hand does not move. I wanted to test that theory as a child, so I sat and stared at the clock for one hour waiting for the hour hand to change its position. But then I realized it wasn't moving at all. But then I also found out the clock was broken. But when I realized it wasn't moving at all, I was saying, how did they define that it defines a period of one hour? How are they deciding this? So next time everybody just thinks about the concept of time, or you think you're late for something, you think you're early for something, you think traffic is taking up too much of your time, just remember, who defines if you're late or early because who defines time? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Master Janani, and uh, next in line up is uh, uh, you. Your, your name? Paneer Saru. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, police officer, I have served in about 30 years of service. Enjoyed my retirement, followed uh, retirement last year. I was last year retired from VLX, the terminal government. If you lose gold, you can uh, get it back or buy it back. When you lose time, can you get it back? It's not possible. Even a, even a minute of time, once you lose, it cannot be gained back. That is the value of time. My time machine goes back to my college days. So I entered into a normal university, I joined as a BSc degree student in Botany. That was the time, how the time uh, is just, uh, is valuable at that time, I just don't, I'm telling it. When I came over to the hostel, there was a huge crowd. And when Con Con Conway is coming, a political leader, that the, the then CM is coming to get the doctorate degree and the students of the RD party, the opposite party here, they arranged a demonstration, flag dog demonstration and just they brought, up, they brought a dog and tied their title on the deck and just drove them out. The policeman gave five minutes time to disperse the crowd. Now I didn't value the time that time. Because we were all there and the agitation, it was a uh, jubilee board and uh, we were just uh, descending to it. And I, after five minutes, they decided to charge. And we were then, uh, we, we were bitter like anything, that just I, since I know swimming, I went back. I just uh, ran back and uh, fell into the tank. There was a huge tank in the university. Because I know swimming, I knew swimming, I just escaped. So that was the time, that travel. And after uh, five or ten years, after joining the police force, so I was the commander of the church. 
throughout life and I faced several encounters and we, I was in the European operation and I was in uh, the Nagsaland operation and so many encounters I have faced. So the time takes the every man's life and whenever you get a good time, it has to be, it has to be used. And then, uh, see, usually the people say, everything will be alright after time passes. Even the animosity between your friends, it will fade away after time passes. So time is a good commodity, best use of it. And thank you very much for the title. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, next let we call it. <laughs> Regret for wasted time is more wasted time. Regret for wasted time is more wasted time. <laughs> Good evening, Toastmasters and guests. So the topic is uh, should not regret for the time what you wasted. Yeah, if I go time travel in my past, since my childhood, every one of you, if you think about your past, you would, you would have been thinking like uh, we have wasted so much of our life. As the previous topic also like, we should not uh, see others, feeling, uh, seeing others and always thinking like, oh, this man is, has become so big and my colleague has become big, so I have wasted so much. Always you will keep on regretting that we have wasted so much of time now. Because we always never think of what we have right now, but we always think about what we don't have. So I think it's a waste of time regretting what we don't have, but be happy with what we have and uh, we have to think about creating uh, our life, what we are going to live and what we are going to achieve. We should not waste time 